See if you can accept on your end. Yo, how we there we go, doing, baby. There we go. Took a minute. Listen, that's a, this, hey. This is exactly how this thing is supposed to start with me and you having that's how freaking we difficulties. Roll, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so shout out to everybody who's on, man. Kev, you know me. I'm not one to blow smoke up anybody's ass, man. You know how much I love you. You know how much I, I respect you. I'm, I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. I think it's long overdue. Um, and at some point, I'll share with the audience why it's, why it's overdue. So let's jump right into it, Kev. Let's jump right into it. Kevin, Cow Kevin Krause, born and raised Suffolk County. Talk to me, man, and tell me, tell me about Earth. Early on in Kevin Krause's life, what makes Kevin Krause who first, he is? First of today? all, uh, feelings are mutual, man. Likewise, same thing, man. Thanks for having me on here. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. You know, I've seen a bunch of your podcasts, and you know, if you had a list of them all, I'm at the bottom, right? The, I'm just happy to be here. Thanks for having me on and uh, letting me share what you know what we're doing, and uh, yeah, let's have some fun, man. So, yeah, you know, we we were talking about the running, right? how I got into all that stuff. And um, it all started when I, when I was little, I was always the smallest kid. And uh, I just, I was good at running. I learned out early, you know, on the playground back in the eighties, you know, growing up on Long Island, just you, know, you and me, very similar. And uh, it was a free for all on that playground, right? It was survival of the fittest. And I wasn't, the, I was the smallest. I definitely wasn't the biggest. I wasn't the strongest, but you know what? I was the fittest. So that's how I survived, man. Running around, people chasing right. me trying to survive and I was good at it and I enjoyed it. And um, I liked working hard and I just, you know, I kept building on that and uh, I had a lot of success in high school. And for me, you know, we didn't have a lot growing up, you know, economically speaking, we didn't have much, right? Yeah. And um, for me, I knew that the running could be my ticket to do, to do excellent things, you know, to, to better myself. And, uh, and I, and I was able to do that. So, yeah, running and, and that kind of stuff has been really good to me. And then, then I guess as time went on, I just, I really enjoyed it. And um, I just, I just love to be out there running, being out in nature, exercising, biking, swimming, mountains, you know, any kind of adventure, man. It's just, it, that's what fuels me, bro. Nah, and you know, one thing I know, one thing I know about you is you're, you're modest and you know, you're a humble, you're a humble guy. Um, so, um, you know, one thing that my wife always tells me is you're supposed to let somebody else tell you something about you. So let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Right. So not only did you get into running, but you became very, very good at running at Longwood high school, all American hall of famer. Right. And we got so good that a college actually came in and said, hey, listen, we want you to come run at our school. So talk about that experience and going in, um, and right, running you know, in college. As, as you know, you know, and anyone knows, running at, at Division One or any competing at any Division One sport, it, that's a whole nother level of the game because, you know, one thing that gave – I had some talent. I wasn't the most talented kid in high school, but I had a lot of talent. In college, everybody has talent. In high school, I could, I could get ahead because I could outwork everybody. In college, you know, everybody works hard. So, so it's a whole nother level of the game. But, man, I was, just, I was just fortunate enough to get to go to a good college, get a good education, and um, just open my mind to, to what was out there in the world. And I went, down to, I went to school down in Virginia. So just to see a different part of the country, different you know, way people live in other areas. So it, it was a great experience for me. I had some success, you know, but I also had injuries. And, uh, you know, you know the, as, as you know, and, and most people who go to college know it, it's a it's a balance, man. You have to balance. The school work's really difficult, and the athletics are very demanding. And you know, running's the, not the most difficult sport, but it's a it's a three. When you get a scholarship, you three sports. You know, you're always in season, right? You have you have cross country, you have indoor track, and you have outdoor track. So it's just a it's a full time thing, man. It ne it never ends. It's relentless. But um, yeah. So I had great experiences with that, you know, and it uh. It, you know, it just exposed me to a lot of different things. We got to travel a ton. And um, you know, some of the friends that I met, I, I think of this one guy that was on my team, my friend Jay, who's one of my best friends from college, roommate. And he taught me something early on. You know, he, 
he had a lot, he came from money, but his whole thing was experiences over 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 property. Like they like he he had the dirtiest clothes. He used to I used to run my my shoes a thousand miles, right? I throw my shoes out. He'd be like, "Yo, Kev, man, we're the same size. Can I have those?" I'm like, "Dude, are you crazy?" Like he didn't want to spend his money on things like that. He wanted to travel and just and do experiences. So I didn't have a lot of money either, but what little money I did have. He said, "Hey, Kev, let's let's spring break. Let's go. Let's go hiking out west. Let's climb some mountains." So he exposed me to that and that mentality of of I rather do experiences than um than you know have possessions of fancy cars and that kind of thing. But yeah, college was great, man. I, I had a great time there. Awesome, awesome. And then so after college, you know, you wound up coming back home. Um, obviously, um, you know, I don't want to. You know, you you you're in you know you're in Wading River right now. Beautiful family. Shout out to Bonnie and right, Callie, Laney and, and Penny and and Jeff, you know what I mean. Love your family. Um, but you know, I want to just talk about you know, like I said, like people might people might see you and I together and kind we're of twins? wonder, like we're, we're twins, what? like who, who's the older <laughs> twin, Stuff like that, right? Right. Like that, right, brothers from another. So. Um, you know, people might want to know like what the connection is, man. And you know, you know, I'll, I'll forever tell the story of how you and I met. You know what I mean? And you know, if you know my personality, you know your personality. You're not, you're not surprised that you're not surprised at how we met. So, um, talk about talk about how we met at the height of the pandemic. You know, because right, I, right. I think no, it's I a great story. story. Man. So you know, pandemic like the lockdown is full effect. And you know, I'm, I'm going out of my mind. I can't, I have to get out of the house. You can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. So, you know, I would always do my run, all that stuff was the same, but I had, you know, we had some extra time. So I hadn't been road biking for a while, something that I always loved to do, just didn't have enough time to do it. So I started, I got back into that. So we're fortunate enough to have this 10 mile bike loop, not far from us. And it's, you know, it's off the road, it's safe, it's nice, it's in the woods. So um, I was going out there, just banging out loops, you know, five, six, seven loops, whatever, you know. And um, one day I'm out there and I'm doing, so if you're on the loop, you're going 10 miles pretty much. It's a full loop. So if you see someone on the loop, they're, they're probably going for a 10 mile loop. So I'm halfway through and I'm doing my thing. I'm cruising. All of a sudden I look up and I see these dudes coming at me. You know, the first guy's, he's 200 pounds, six foot tall. The next guy's 6'2", 240 and up and up. And then, and then Terrell. Here comes Terrell. Terrell, are you six five? Man, I don't know. Six five. Three, I don't want to give your weight away, but you're uh, in the three hundred neighborhood, man. And I'm, I'm like, I've never seen guys this a group of guys this big on bikes. Like they don't even look like they belong on bikes, man. And um, so I see these guys, and you know, we pass each other, and they're laughing, they're having a great time. And right away, I'm thinking, man, these guys must be like college football players, maybe you know, alumni thing, basketball. I don't know. Maybe they were in the in the army or something like that. So I loop around. I'm like, I'm like, these guys are riding ten miles, and they. I'm telling you, right. I have a really nice race bike. They didn't have like these insane race bikes, all right? They're guys on a huffy, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, how can the bike even hold these guys? Anyway, so I do the loop around. The whole time I'm thinking, how these guys are riding ten miles, man. That's 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 awesome. They're getting after it. Come around again, boom! I see him again. Now I'm like, like blowing my mind. Twenty miles. These guys must be like. Green Berets or something. NFL. Like, these guys were in the NFL. I know they were, you know? Like, that's what I'm thinking. So, the whole next thing, 20 miles they're doing, that's crazy. I come around again, 30 miles. No way. I whip around, like, I got, I got to meet these. I got to meet these dudes. There's no way these guys are riding 30 miles. This, this is blowing my mind. So, I whip around, and I, I forget my opening line, but it was something like, hey, man, like, oh, and the whole time, they're just, they're laughing. They're, they're like having the time of their lives. Like, I want to be a part of that, you know? So I whip around. And I'm like, dude, what, like, what are you guys doing? Like, hey, what's going on here? And then, uh, Terrell, you give me your perspective on it. Yeah, no, it was, it, it's, it's exactly how you said it, you know? And I think, you know, I think the craziest thing, and, and you know, we'll get to the crazy thing, is it's the height of the pandemic. And, and, and quite honestly, like, there was really a thing of, like, you know, as a, you know, as a black man, like, you know what I mean? Like riding past white people on the trail, like, you know, the tensions were so, the tensions were so crazy during that time. Like you didn't know 
how people were, you know, how, you know, people would react, like, you know what I mean? And you just don't know. And here you come and we were laughing and having a good time because that's what we did. And you go, what are you guys laughing at? You know, and that, that comment could have been taken any kind of way, but it's like knowing you and now knowing me, it was like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Like it could have, you know what I mean? We could have been like, what the hell are you, who the hell are you? Like, you know, it could have just been, and then not only did you ask that, you turned around and started writing with us like you knew us forever. So we like, but that's who we are and that's who you are. And that's what made it, that's what made that moment, that's what made that moment so perfect. And, um, you know, we don't know you from a can of paint. You don't know us, but me and my guys were having a, um, a Hall of Fame dispute and what constitutes a Hall of Fame career. And a couple of my young boys got put into the Hall of Fame. And I, you know, we were talking about how I didn't feel like they had Hall of Fame careers. And, you know, we're talking and we're talking and we're talking. And the funny thing was, right. we found out that you went yep. to their high school at Longwood. Right? And then coach. you go, yeah, yeah you know, um, yeah, I ran, I ran cross country. And um, yeah, I, I was an All-American. <laughs> You know, right. I kind of like started giving right. it to my guys. Like, yeah, right. that's a real Hall of Fame career when you're an All American. And so, like, we we talk about that all the time, and we just, you know, we loved it. But we met you, and then a month later, we had our um, we had our first bikeathon. And not only did you you come to the bikeathon, you know, like you right. brought you brought your daughter Callie to the bikeathon. You know what I mean? Which we thought was great. So once again, now we got this little girl riding with a bunch of dudes and everything. Right. And it was, it was just all love, man. It was like, you know, she was comfortable because her dad was comfortable. And I think like that was a great thing. Um, and it's something that we always, that we spoke about. And, you know, we kind of built right. the friendship um, from there. But um, we had no idea. We're just guys that's riding bikes on the trail. Like, I didn't know what I was in for. Like, I didn't know who I was starting to build a friendship with and, and what his capabilities, what his capabilities were. So um, I remember us having breakfast and, um, and I told you I was, I was getting ready for my wife's birthday and everything. And like, and you said, Hey, that weekend, I'm going to be right. out in Arizona, I believe. And, and doing some type of crazy right. run bike and swim type of deal. And I was like, what? You know what I mean? And so that's when I got a taste of, oh, like Kev does some really, really extreme stuff. And when we say it, you know what I mean? When I, you know, when I talk to the boys about it, they're like, what? He's running what? He's biking how many miles? Because that was new to us. I think we right. biked 50 miles that day. And um, I mean, I, got, I think we biked 50 miles and it's like, you know, that was a huge deal. But for you, you run 50 miles, you bike 50 miles. One day you might swim 50 miles. I don't know. So talk about, talk about where the mindset came from. Like, obviously like right. you've been a runner all your life. So like, if you say like Kev runs a marathon, like, okay, I get right. it. Kev's a runner. You understand what I'm saying? But it's not right. just running marathons. Like you do some extreme things. So where does that mindset come from to push your body to I mean, honestly i just i just really enjoy doing that stuff that's my comfortable spot like like doing this this is hard for me right you know that right but going out for a 50 mile ride or a run or that like that's just that's where i'm comfortable man and um and, and while i'm doing it i just i have such huge tremendous gratitude that you know first of all to be you know 52 years old and to be this healthy and free you know like, like in this country, we take it for granted. So many people take it for granted that I can just go out any day I want and it's safe. You know, I can ride 50 miles, 100 miles. I can run. I can do all these things. And, I, you know, and I have the financial means to do that and the support of my wife and my, and my kids. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just so I'm just so lucky. So when, when I'm out doing some, you know, crazy 100 this or 50 that, I mean, I'm just I'm in my happy place. And, and I feel so fortunate. I just, I just thank God that I'm able to do these things. You know, the gratitude, man. That, that's really all it is. Nah, no question, no question about it. And so, um, through your, through your running, and you know, the way that you like to do things, and honestly, like kind of like down for whatever. Like you're that kind of guy. Like, hey, Kev, man. Like, let's let's do this. Let, let's do it like you're kind of like the guy like let's do it let's see right. what happens and like we'll just give it a try if we do it we do it 
don't we don't and so um i want to talk about um you know how close we became but so close that there were so many things right. that i didn't know about you and there's things that you didn't know about it's like it wasn't until two years later like you know when you talk about like oh like what does kevin right. do like oh I, I don't know what he does and so and so we're out on the trail one day and i finally asked you what did you do for a living you know what i mean because <laughs> i got tired of telling my wife i don't know what he does like it's right. it's kev like that's all i know it's kev um and you and you said guest and i'm like well jesus like he said he works overnight and you know he's out here we're on the trail early in the morning like what could he possibly do overnight so does he like work at you know does he stock shelves at a grocery store or walmart or something like that i don't i don't know and you go i'm five oh oh sure. <laughs> kev's a cop so, you know, you know, and and you know like you know like you know like at that time Time again, like you know, what I mean, like we didn't, you know, black people, we didn't, we don't have, we didn't have a the best relationships with law enforcement. You know what I mean? And so that. again, you like that. you know, to, yeah, absolutely. So you know what I mean? So that was that was great to find out. Like you know, like this is a good guy, and you know what I mean? And you know, not everybody's the same, right? So there's so many lessons that, and so many barriers that you know, our little relationship, you know, knocks down and, and, um, and I love it, you know, and I love that. I love that about you, you know, just the type of person that you are. Um, but, you know, I want to take that law enforcement thing that, you know, is giving you a lot of opportunities outside of it and, um, a chance meeting that you had, um, you know, with the guy who, whose book I read and everything like that. And, you know, because of your love for fitness and everything, you got a chance to build a lifelong friendship, which um, is leading to a big deal that we'll talk about later. So um, talk about the um, the chance meeting that you have and how you met Jesse and how you guys have developed this right. um, relationship right. so, over, so team, over the think years. About it, kind of the way, you know, you and I met, you know, you and I were so different, right? But we're really not. We're, we're more similar. Like we both had that personality where, hey man, if I see somebody that that you know, I, I want to meet that guy. We're we're gonna go talk to them. Like we're not shy about that, and uh, and that's kind of how I met Jesse. I was out. We were both out west at a conference, and um, it, it's kind of a long story, but we um we we ended up going on a run together. I, I know he, I had no idea who he was, and and kind of like me, like you know, you thought I was the guy stocking shelves at Walmart. Well, Jesse's the same kind of guy. Like when you see him. He, you know, he he looks like the guy that's stocking. And nothing against people that stock shelves. I used to do that as a kid too. Nothing against. Him. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, but you know, he's not wearing the suit. He's not. He doesn't look like a million dollar guy. Um. So when we met, mm -hmm. we just we just went out for a run. We went out for a five mile run back to um the. I'm sorry I had to get that off. Um, back to the campus where we were staying, and um, we just started running together. And just, he, hey, Kev, what do you do? I'm like, ah, you know, I run marathons and um. He's like, well, you know, I, what do you do? He said, well, I've run 100 miles. And at the time, this is going back like eight years ago, to me, I'd run tons of marathons and, and triathlons and those kind of things. But running 100 miles was, was, you know, was incomprehensible for me. Like four marathons, I do one and I'm, I'm like wiped out for a week. I can't walk for a week. And, and this guy's doing four in a row without stopping 100 miles. And I said, man, there's no way I could ever do that. I'll, ne mm -hmm. I'll never do that. And he just looks at me and he goes, nah, you'll do it. You could do it. So anyway, we, uh, we ended up, you know, developing a really good friendship. was super tight. And, um, and he was right, you know. So but the lesson, part of the lesson to take away from that is you really need to surround yourself with people who do exceptional things, be, you know, way beyond what you think is possible. And that's, and that's why. And then when you do it, you could end up doing those things. You know, I think of that saying that, um, you know, you hang out with four criminals in a year or two, you're going to be a criminal you hang out with four millionaires in the years you're going to be a millionaire so but it's like that you know he he just set the bar i thought the bar was at a marathon and jesse opened my eyes that no man a you know, hundred miles that's that's so it just you know it just opened your eyes as to what you could do absolutely now, absolutely so before i get into my next question i want to give a hey, shout Timmy. out to our guy tim tim just got on here tim's Timmy, what's going on, man? Shout out to Tim, man. I met Tim last year. Great dude, man. Great dude. Good luck to you, man, okay, over the wait, next couple weeks. Tim, I just got um, to 
So, you know, Jesse's an amazing guy, and I'm super fortunate to be friends with him. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's opened me up to a lot of cool things. But I tell you, the best thing is I've met so many amazing guys. And, and T, you, you've met a lot of them, too. Tim Snee's a perfect example, man. There's so many great guys, some of my best friends that I met through Jesse, man. He just attracts really good yeah. people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it's, that's a really cool thing about that. Uh, yeah, now nah, Tim's a good dude, man. Shout out to Tim, man. So, you know, you kind of, you kind of gave me a, um, a segue into this, and you talked about your, um, your teammate in college that talked about experience right. over, right. over property, right? Like, you know, like you can always buy things, right? You know what I mean? Like how much you buy, whatever doesn't really matter, but like, you know, experiences with family, right. experiences with your children, right? Like those are this right like those are those are priceless things so that leads me into um i'm reading a book man that was um recommended by a friend of mine said you're gonna like it man it's called living with the seal man like it's a great book so i go purchase the book you know and i i did i loved the, i loved the book and in this book man it talks about kevin the cop and i'm like okay you know they started talking about kevin's rule and lo and behold <laughs> i'm friend with kevin the cop now right. like would have known right. that right by reading the book i do remember rule and so i want you to explain um what jesse meant by kevin's rule and you know like it honestly ties right. into what you learned right. from your 100%. teammate right. in college. yeah so jesse and i uh a bunch of years back like five or six years ago we uh we go up to mount washington you know, mount washington's in new hampshire it's it's really cold we, we always go in the winter like january february you know the coldest time and um this particular year, I bring my daughter. She's 10, 10 or 11 years old. He brings his son, same age. And we, we hike up and we, we sleep outside. You know, we sleep on the wood platform under the stars. And you're in your sleeping bag. And, uh, and it's just, it's beautiful. Like, you know, most people think you're out of your mind, but it's, it's a special experience. And I've been doing it every year for 25, 30 years now. So this one particular year, I'm up there with Jesse and our kids. And, um, you know, it's late at night and we're in the bags and we're just talking before bed. And, he, and he's like, Kev, you know, do you realize there's billions of people in the world? And we're the only four people on this mountain. And we were. There was nobody else sleeping there. And I'm like, yeah, man, you know, we're lucky. This is really cool. And he goes, no, like he's, his, his mind is blown. He's like, no, man, this is amazing. This is crazy. And he says, he says how often do you do this? I said, well, this trip I do, I do every year. You know, I, I try to get up here at least once a year, every year. And um, he's like, no, but like, you know, like other trips. I said, well, you know, I try to do something like once a month. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be real expensive or, um, you know, anything extravagant, but I try to do something cool. Like, you know, once a month, but like take the kids to a concert, go for, you know, just go kayaking, go, my, my son used to love fishing, you know, go on a fishing trip or, or whatever, you know, whatever the kid, the thing is, what they call it the Kevin's rule. Jesse termed it that. It doesn't have to necessarily be what, as a, as a parent or an adult, what you like to do, but you got to kind of, you know, like we go to concerts. My kids love going to concerts. Like it's not really my thing, but they love it. So Kevin's rule has got to be, you know, you got to you got to do what the other people want to do too, right? Um, so about about once a month, maybe every other month, I do some kind of cool trip. So Jesse was like, "Oh, that's insane! That's crazy!" So he he coined it Kevin's rule. So he kind of made a big thing out of it. But it, to me, it's just something that you know I've been doing since college. That like when well, my friend kind of introduced me to that idea of experiences and. Um, you just try to do new experiences and like i try to emphasize you really don't need any money to do this because there's so many cool things out there like i'm lucky we live about a mile from the beach and um just hiking through the woods and going to the beach and going out to the jetty have lunch out there there's so many cool little things you can do that are really cool you know watch mm -hmm. the sunset like that and you don't need a ton of money but hey if you have money those trips are great too Absolutely. Nah, I love that. I love that. So, um, so you talked about like how, like, you know, like Jesse raised your bar, like, um, you know, you did that, you've done that for me. You've done that, uh, for my young boys, um, Ryan that. and George, you know what I mean? Like, you know, right. 50 miles was a big deal. And I remember on the trails, like AT, like you're about to turn right. 50. You know, we got to ride 50 miles, you know, for your birthday. Like, and I'm like, ah, Kev, man. And, you know, like, you know, we wound up riding out right. to Montauk last year. And what, you know, great trip. You know, 
you know, shout out to my wife for allowing me to do that because that's the first time I've, you know, ever like was allowed to like ride on the road. So um, obviously you talked about your wife before and how supportive she is of all the stuff that all the things that you do. So shout out to Shelly and Bonnie. Um, but, you know, so now, you know, a 70 mile trip out to Montauk is like, oh, OK, so now we got to do a century ride now, which is huge which is huge in my circle. Like, obviously you're doing more, but um, I want to talk about what's happening. You know what I mean? What's about to happen and what you're about to embark on. So, you know, the Century Ride is a big deal for me, man. But um, you're a part of this 10-man crew that's about to go on a ride of a lifetime and ride across the United States of America. And I want you to talk a little bit about that. Um, and I want you to talk about... Um, the right. cause oh, that you man. guys are riding so through. yeah this is the ride of a lifetime man i can't even tell you how how fortunate i am to get to do this i mean jesse put this whole thing together um you know he's been working tirelessly on this and uh it, it's gonna be amazing man it, you know it's gonna be amazing so we're doing this for a charity the charity the charity is um it's bikes for bikes for kids foundation.org that's that's uh, the, the website um i love i really love this charity bunch of reasons why first number one this charity every penny goes to the actual getting bikes for kids there's no no there's no one's on salary there's no administrative course none of that stuff so i really i like that part of it the other thing is they make the kids they, they don't just give the kids bikes first of all they give them to kids that are really in need of it but they don't just give it to them they have to do a, a whole class throughout the year to learn about being a good person and being a responsible neighbor and friend and just, you know, contributing to society, all those things. And at the end of that, then they, then they complete the program, they could get the bike. So it, and, and the motto, check out this, the motto of the company is nothing is given, everything is earned. So you're really teaching these kids, these are third, fourth graders, you're teaching them at a, a young age that, hey, you got to go out there and get it. You're not, we're not just giving you stuff. You got to work for it. And it's just great lessons to teach these young kids. So I love the charity. Our goal, you know, hopefully we get there. We're trying to, we're trying to raise enough money to buy 3,000 bikes. That would be one bike for every mile, right? It's, it's a huge goal, but we always, we always go big, man. You know, we always go big. I think right now we're, we're close to 500 bicycles. So uh, it, it's going to be great no matter what we end up doing. But um, I tell you, the crew that Jesse put together, these these ten guys, they're amazing. Like if you list everybody's resume of all the things that they've done, I'm number ten, bro. I mean, I am at the I'm number ten. These guys are amazing. And and the heck with their resumes. I know them all personally. I'm friends with all of them. And they're they're just amazing people. The the positivity and and just the energy that they give, man, like I, I can't even tell you. I'm so excited just to spend fourteen days with these guys. I, I I don't I, I'm gonna be a different person when when I get back, man. You know these these guys are absolutely amazing. Yeah, so I mean I'm psyched, man. I mean the ride the ride's gonna be the ride, man. It's gonna hurt and it's gonna be painful, but that's my happy place. You know I'm not I'm not, I mean maybe we'll talk again. You know when it's over. You know maybe maybe I'm I'm down like underplaying it. Like I'm not really worried about the pedaling part. You know I'm I'm really not, man. You know I'm just pumped. I'm I'm really pumped up. It's gonna be cool. Now it sounds really good, and, and definitely when you when you get back and you know have some downtime, we definitely got to do a um a post ride a post ride right. show so that I can you know we can hear all about it because you know you're not just you know we talked about riding on the loop that's off the road and it's safe. You guys not riding from San Diego to Florida just on a, a off road bike trail like you guys are riding on highways right. with tractor trailers and. Right. All types of stuff. I don't know what's gonna be out there, but I know I'm excited to. Um, I know I'm excited to um, to hear, you know, to hear about the adventure, man. And you know, once again, man, like you're doing something that's um, that makes me think about, like, what can I do in my at my level that's outside of, you know, that's outside of my box. Um, something, something that's going to make my wife be like, "Oh my God!" Like, you know what I mean? And and so, you know, I'm I'm excited for you, man. And I, you know, I appreciate it. 
um, you know, you just doing, you know, you doing these things because it gives me something to look forward to. So I'm I'm looking forward to like, you know, sitting down with you again and, and hearing and hearing how it went. So um as we get ready to um wrap this up, I wanna ask you two questions before we get out of here. So you talked about hiking up Mount, you know, right, hiking up right. Mount Washington. You know what I'm saying? If you could choose choose three mountains right. to hike up in your lifetime. In your lifetime, right. what well, would those well, three mountains listen, be? Listen, this is going to happen, so this isn't even like, you know, like a hypothetical thing. But, yeah, man, soon when I have a little more time, hopefully pretty soon, uh, I'm hitting more mountains. But, you know, listen, I love this country. I love staying here. So I'm not I'm not dying to go to all these other places. I want, I want to conquer everything in this country, mm -hmm. and, and there's so much beautiful stuff here. So I want to hit McKinley in Alaska. You know, that's, that's uh, over 20,000 feet uh, up in Alaska, right? And, and maybe, you know, not many people have done the winter climb. I have a friend of mine who just retired, a school teacher, and uh, he always talked about doing a winter, a winter expedition in McKinley, which only a few people have done. But definitely McKinley, one way or the other. Um, I want to go back to Mount Rainier, which about 25 years ago, a bunch of us went up there, and we kind of got snowed in and, in a whiteout at about 10,000 feet. So I have some unfinished business back in uh, Mount Rainier, which is just, you were just out there outside of Seattle, right? And then my third one is I, I just absolutely love the Grand Canyon. So check this out. Well, you know, my son Joey, when he was about 10 or 11, I took him to the Grand Canyon. And, and, and um, I, I guess I was pretty tough as a dad, but I made him go down to the bottom in the back. And it, it, I thought he was going to kill me. He, you know, it was tough. It was hard. It was very hot and everything. So now, now that he's bigger and way better shaped than I am, I want to go back with him, go do a rim to rim. So go start at the south rim of the canyon. You know, the canyon's what I think about 6,000 feet. You go down to the bottom, back up the north rim, turn around and come back. So it's like 24 miles total. I'd love to do that, do that one in a day and do it with my son. It'll be amazing. Hey, T, you can do it, man. We'll do it together. <laughs> yeah. And now what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll come and right. videotape you and Joey doing it. That's what my, <laughs> my knees hurt right now. You're just saying <laughs> so nah, I love that so um, the last question right. that I ask every guest on here is um, right. when it's all said and done when it's all said and done you're a retired cop you're not running and riding anymore whatever the case may be I'll, right. well, I'll be, to be dead running. when I'm not running and riding man but uh, yeah I mean okay. you know, I just it depends on who you ask right if you ask my wife I want to be remembered as a good husband. If you ask my kids, I want to be remembered as a good dad. But well, if I ask you, you know, someone asks you, a good friend, and and so on and so on. And that's all. Like, you know, I don't need to be the best. I just, you know, he was good. That's 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 good for me. Nah, I love that. I love that answer, and I'm here to co-sign that. You're you're all okay. three. Um, Kev, listen. Today right. we did 36 minutes today, right? You went over, you killed. So I don't want to. I have to tell right. the audience how nervous you were to do this, and you look like a pro here. You look like a pro here. Um, I knew you could do this. This is something that you promised me that was um that was outside of your box that you would do for me right. if I did something that was outside of my box. So I appreciate keeping your word. I feel like this is the perfect time to have had this conversation because of this big adventure that you're about to go on. Um, you know, what's what's understood doesn't need to be said, man. I love you, you know, with all my heart, man. And you're you're one of the best. You're one of the best. Um, and, you know, like, good luck on the ride. And I'm looking forward to you coming back and telling us what, how it was, I appreciate, man. I appreciate yeah, you, you have coming me, man. on. Thank you very much. Love you, bro. Peace. All right. All right. Take care. All right.